Hello everybody, Scott Golden here with the Pro Wrestling Logic YouTube channel and the World Class Championship Wrestling Review Series. We go to the last week of uh, May in 1983, May 28th, 1983 is our episode today. Not particularly a fan of the episode, but it's a stylistic thing uh, as it relates to the, I guess, I wouldn't even say the booking of the show, just the layout of the show. Uh, gentlemen, Chris Adams and Johnny Mantel is your single, is your first singles match of the day. The main event is an eight-person elimination style matchup, which is where my problem comes in because it's hard to follow um, in so much that there's so much action crammed into a short span of time that it was hard to just follow everything, and, and so I wasn't necessarily a fan of the match. Um, Johnny Mantell and Chris Adams is your opening match, basic match here again. Shine on Adams. Adams really doesn't have a, a, a storyline to speak of quite yet, although that, that'll change as we go into the summer, but uh, um, is always a good wrestler. He's always, uh, a, you know, picking a body part, sticking with it, going through the motions of that. Uh, we actually do see an arm bar that uh, is, uh, they, they fight over for several minutes with, um, in fact, uh, manipulation of joints uh, like you'd see a, a, a Nigel McGuinness do or Marty Scroll, Not to that degree, but that there is a little bit of that there. Uh, Mantel comes back with a, a backdrop and uh, ba basic ground and pound type techniques, kicks and whatnot. Um, there is a double down about five minutes in the match, four or five minutes in. Uh, and it's, it's clear that uh, both guys are working hard trying to do what they can. Amazing to me that um, kind of that more that more sports related style. We actually see a cartwheel into a head scissors takeover and back to the arm by um, by Adams. Adams is really good. I did not uh, have much exposure to Chris Adams uh, during his prime, and I can certainly see where people enjoyed him a great deal here in Texas, as I am. I'm learning to enjoy him myself here. Uh, if you are not familiar with his work, worth going out of your way to see. Um, there is a roll-through pin that Mantel is not able to hold, and a shift of weight one to a near fall. Innovative near falls in the, the use of weight and the use of body positioning, a major part of, of what's driving the match. Um, innovative pins or maybe just different for that time period. I'm not sure that they're necessarily innovative. By today's standards, uh, slingshot into the corner at one point by uh, Adams, and uh, you don't actually see the slingshot all that much either. Not anymore or or then. Um, and so kind of a roll-through pin attempt by Mantel. He gets a two-count. Um, and, you know, Adams, who seems to be being featured a bit more on the program, maybe they're trying to find a, a program for him to go to. Uh, they do a time limit draw here, and that is the close of the match. Um, trying, I assume, trying to get uh, Mantel over. Uh, there is a there is a fans vote on the wrestlers, captains of the team match to set up the main event. Not quite sure if they didn't have enough guys or what the deal was there. Uh, Buddy Roberts and Iceman King Parsons are the representatives for the Freebirds and Von Erich teams, respectively. Uh, and they have a singles match to set up the, the uh, I guess, the main event or wh whatever. But uh, uh, Roberts is always good as a seller. Um, there's good drop kicks and just solid strikes from Parsons. He strikes in a way that you actually believe that his strikes do damage without looking so brutal or, or phony that it doesn't come come together well. Um, Buddy Roberts willing to take just about any risk, uh, although not a high flyer by any stretch. He actually goes in in a, in a point at the match is uh, on the on the second rope and just kind of drops down with a with a dropping foot. I'm not quite sure why you go to the ropes to do something that least impactful, but it is what it is. Um, you know. Uh, Parsons comes up and is uh, uh, successful, and we actually do see a post-match where there is a win with the 
with the butt butt by Iceman King Parsons, and he does take a little chunk of the hair of Buddy Roberts, just a little bit, uh, to kind of get that going. Then we move into the main event, which again, I mentioned in the beginning of the review, not a match that I enjoyed a lot of because of the elimination style. I'm just going to hit the highlights here, not going to go through everybody's eliminations or anything like that because the match just feels so chaotic. It was... The announcer did okay with telling us, you know, what happened and whatnot, but it was almost like they did too much in uh, too short a time period. Period Again, they had uh, about 15 minutes, and for the talent they had, I think uh, it just didn't fit or flow well. Uh, Kevin Von Erich tries to get a hold of uh, Michael Hayes quite a bit, and there is a... Uh, the, the, the Freebirds join up with Jimmy Garvin, by the way. That is the their partner, and obviously Garvin and uh, Kevin Von Eric are going to battle over the Texas Championship. Um, Terry Gordy is eliminated early, and that's a surprise. Everyone kind of dogpiles on him. Um, you know, it's... It's just an interesting dichotomy. Michael Hayes, who I continually week after week say that he is an underrated fellow, he certainly is, and that's that's it goes without saying. It should go without saying here, but um, you know it is what it is as far as that's concerned. The Von Erichs do quite well here, um, and then of course we see them kind of going round and round. Brawling from the Freebirds, more wrestling attempted by the Von Erichs. Obviously, always going back to the claw. Um, Octopus style hold at one point by Hayes, which is kind of a surprise. Hayes is a guy who I think they, I don't know, I would even say they kind of overvalue a little bit or, or, or uh, I'm sorry, undervalue a bit. And, uh, um, you know, the match is, is, is broken down here. Um, Freebird still going at it, and Parsons is is out of the loop here uh, in the later part of the match, and um, Kevin gets beaten down quite a bit for several minutes. He's in the ring longer than he probably should be, especially as a singles champion. Uh, Hayes tries to wear him down, and that doesn't go quite according to plan. Uh, Finally, a hot tag, and Terry comes in. Uh, Ice making Parsons, I guess, is, was not eliminated. Just, uh, um, you know, everybody kind of comes back in. They brawl all the way around the ring. Perhaps this isn't the elimination style one. I know there was an elimination style. Perhaps the, that's the following week. Because it, it turns into complete chaos, and uh, uh, there's a poke to the eye of, of Parsons, who... Um, you know, post match, they're they're kind of distracted. The Freebirds do walk away at, with a uh, cheap victory, and um, the referee is distracted. Uh, Hayes and Roberts help Terry Gordy to get the the cheating victory, and uh, that's that's that match there. Uh, we close out May with a bit of a barn burner. I mean, if you like chaotic matches. If you like six men to eight men, that sort of thing. Texas is famous for that stuff at this time. We will be back <coughs> starting June of 1983 here in World Class.